How is it going guys? Welcome to a video on Code Tech and Tutorials. My name is Matt, your local today's video technician. The one and only because uh, this is my channel. Yeah, here we go. We're gonna I'm gonna show you how to install Linux on basically any computer you want. I'm trying to keep this very simple, so I might be skipping a lot of technical stuff and staying out of technical stuff. I just want to keep this uh, in a format that anybody can follow. So here we go. I went ahead and went to distrowatch.com because it's a, it's a sweet site to just check how distributions are doing and which ones are popular and just kind of feel around Linux distributions a little bit. It's a, I love the site. I spent a lot of time here as a child. Well, I've noticed that MX Linux was pretty far up there. And since that's the case, we're going to go ahead and use it. So I already went ahead and downloaded it. I basically just clicked on it and then I clicked on their website and then I clicked on download and then current release, yada, yada, direct download. I just did direct download and I went and got an ISO file, an ISO file, which in case you don't know, is a disk image of some sort usually meant for cds but we don't have cds anymore everybody's using usb cds are a thing of the past or so they're going that way so what we got is these flash drives now this one is clearly about as old as a cd and I've got a bunch of these flash drives for everything. This one is even a Wi-Fi device. I don't really use them for data. I just use them for disk images basically. Because what we did after we downloaded it is we launched this program called Rufus. I'll bring up Rufus here. So what Rufus does is it allows you to put an ISO onto one of these handy dandy little USB drives. Clicking them around for effect. Okay. And so I've went ahead and done that. Now, I've already completely finished this, but I'm gonna start it over again just so you can see it. So I'm gonna do a close. All right, cam, cam, meet, meet setup. Setup, meet YouTube, hello YouTube. So this one I just imaged right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and eject it now. Pull that sucker and we'll grab another one, say this Kingston one, one that you wanna image, check your data. Make sure you're not overwriting anything important, but you basically need to drive. So this one pops up and says it's LUbuntu. I can go look at it says there's a problem whatever so I'd be fine with imaging this one it's probably a broken install for all I know uh, what we do is we launch Rufus now Rufus is an interesting tool because it just runs Rufus is a small application that creates bootable USB drives so you basically just go here download it and run the little thing you get it I've got it in a download folder currently so I just double click and it runs but I have some old versions elsewhere and as you can see this is portable and so what you get here is it tries to find the device, but you can pick from this drop down and pick the device that you're looking at uh, that you want to image. And then you pick an ISO or a disk image. Um, well, I guess you can pick which one. I'm doing ISO here. But as you can see, Rufus handles multiple things. So then you just hit select over here. And we can go to downloads and I can go find an ISO. There's a bunch of them here looking at MX so I'll just click MX and then we get some more options here I always leave everything default and you just hit start it gives you some warnings and stuff um, it'll say OK and then a final warning is going to destroy all the previous data so you'd hit OK here and it goes through its process and if it completes successfully you can now boot with this puppy I'm gonna hit cancel here though because I've already done it but that's how you use Rufus it's part of the process of knowing how to get Linux on a computer these days, so it's a rather important step. 
So just to recap so far, you basically go get a Linux distro you want from distro watch, pick one, pick cool one, um, or just pick a popular one so you know there's a lot of documentation. Use Rufus. There might there's other ways other than Rufus. Rufus is just a very easy one uh, to image with. And now let's go on to part three. Part three. Okay, part three is actually rather hard to do because I basically have to go install this on something. Obviously, I don't want to install this on my main computer um, because that's, you know, I've got my whole workflow going. I don't want to mess with it, really. But but I did just get a new laptop, and it, it needs Linux. The only problem is it's all USB-C, and I don't have a USB-C adapter. So I'm going to have to continue this in a few days because uh, I'm ordering one. Or maybe I'll go somewhere if I can manage to avoid the people. Just people in general. All right. So there you go. And we'll get to the next part What and what will seem like an instant to you. But for me, it's going to be days. Okay, so I'm going to go out on a little bit of a limb here. This is not the laptop I was just talking about. This is a different one. And it could use Linux as well. It has Windows right now, but I'm not particularly partial to having Windows on it. I, in fact, bought it for Linux. Got like 32 gigs of memory. It's very much a developer uh, workstation. So that was the intention of it. And it's supposed to have Linux, but I could never get Linux on it because it has an NVIDIA Quadro graphics card and every time I try to put Linux on there I get this garbled nonsense USB if it doesn't fit flip it over is that the, is that the rule okay got it cheese so I'm gonna power this thing on I believe it's F12 to get to the BIOS or boot menu so I'm gonna spam F12 and your computer will, will vary you often have to spam something in the beginning to get to the BIOS and this is a little tricky too oh apparently F12 is network boot but that presents an error because there's no network boot system. And then it gets me to the startup menu, which is good enough. And hopefully this doesn't wash out too much. Come on, camera. Don't fail me now. So we get boot options here. External USB drive is the top one. It's All right. And we get to the main installer for the customized boot. And one of them is just a standard boot. It looks like it says May 31st, 2020. Uh, I guess I'm just going to pick the top one. The other stuff is advanced options, memory test, and boot rescue. I don't want to do boot rescue. I don't want to do a memory test. I don't really want to do advanced options on my first install. Customized boot, no. Well, let's just do the standard one at the top. It's not named, so it makes me question what it is exactly. It's MX 19.2 X64. It just says May 31st, 2020. So I guess this is the default version, the default install. And we're going to go with that just to see how it goes by default. Oh, and we've got some weird screen tearing. It looks like the NVIDIA support is not there on this one either. Screen tearing thing, it's just got the wrong drivers. It's trying to process as though it's like, a, I guess, an AMD or an Intel card. But it's an NVIDIA, so... Yeah, that's why I haven't been able to get Linux on this thing. I can... I don't know if anyone has any tips about that. Let me know. And we're back. It's a whole new day. Well, um, USB-C thing on the other computer not going to uh, happen anytime soon. So I figured I'd get this done. And what I did is just I went and grabbed another PC that uh, I was being stored elsewhere. Anyway, I went and got it. And it's a ThinkPad. This is a ThinkPad, uh, it's an L430. This thing actually got me through several years of college and I used Linux on it a bunch. So I know Linux works great on this machine. However, I did end up putting Windows on it at some point because someone else was using it and they didn't want Linux. But uh, they're no longer really using it and it doesn't really matter that much. So I'm just gonna pop Linux on here. So we've got the MX Linux from last time, from earlier, doing the whole Rufus thing. We're just gonna... And we're gonna power down this thing. I know you should go through the proper power down, 
but since I don't care about what's on this disk or anything really, I'm just going to hold power until it shuts down. And now another important thing is you want to be connected to a power source. You want to be connected to a power source when you're installing, of course. I mean, I know it's kind of common sense, but it's sometimes it's something that some people may overlook and it could cause serious problems if it dies in the middle of an install. There we go. Interrupt normal startup, press enter, it says. And now it's beeping at me. All right, let's give it a second. We seem to have interrupted it and we can get the boot manager now. There is a USB hard disk drive. Now, if I could actually get into the BIOS, which I'm sure there's a way I could show you more stuff, but you can't even hardly see the screen anyway. So I'll leave that to the comments and maybe the details below and maybe editing to... Okay, well, I'm basically going to choose the very first option. Looks like the focus is getting destroyed. This camera. So it looks like we got to a screen. It must be loading. It's not really showing us anything. Okay. And we've got to the desktop. It appears we've booted to a live mode. Yeah, this is just live. So this is approximately what it's going to look like once we get it fully booted. All right, so usually there's an installer and it looks like there's one on the desktop here. I know you can't read that, but it says installer, install Linux. So we're going to double click that and it should take us to the actual installer and give us some options about what to do with our disk. Right now, this live mode is running entirely off this USB. Even if you get a laptop, if you get a laptop or a computer with no hard drive, no OS, and you just want to boot into it and do something, you can make one of these disks or one of these USBs the same way and just boot a computer with it. However, the BIOS options have to be set right. Most corporate computers, most business computers have something set in the BIOS that locks it down and says, hey, you can't boot from USB only from this, the hard drive. But most consumer grade laptops and other laptops, or if you have access to the BIOS to change those settings, then you can boot the Linux. That's often one of the things that people get stuck on. And I can't remember what that's called for the life of me. Uh, I'd know it. It's the installer, hit next, and looks like there's a partition tool. There's custom install. I'm going to run the partition tool. It opens up Gparted. So Gparted is going to give some... Now, I know from experience that if I, if I shrink one of the Windows partitions, hey, like shrink it, and remove some of its unused space, it will bug Windows out until I do a repair on Windows. So I know BizQuick did a video about installing Linux, and he said, well, Windows doesn't work, we're just gonna erase it. You don't have to do that. You can actually do the startup repair, and it will fix that, and you will be able to boot to Windows and Linux. But in general, that whole startup error, if you're getting that far, then all you really need to do is run the startup repair on Windows and it should allow you to boot back in the window. I don't really want to keep Windows on here and I don't really want to mess with disks. So I'm just going to use the entire disk in this case. But if you don't want to, I would suggest looking carefully at some guide that explains the partitions. There's actual text on here. There's text right here, but there's just no way that this camera is picking it up. So I don't know, but basically I'm going to say use the entire disk and hit next. Okay to format the disk, I'm gonna hit yes. Install Grub for Windows and Linux. I'm gonna master boot record here. Cause that, maybe if I take it off of this thing, just get it right up to it. Maybe then, oh, Jesus, is this what I gotta do? My stand doesn't reach to here. All right, and now we get the option to it basically says automatically reboot. We finished up here. It asks us if we want to reboot out of this live mode. We'll go ahead and hit yes, and boom, we're going to reboot, and we'll be in to the system. And it's just going to boot up, and it, it should go right to Linux. Now, we'll see if I did something terribly wrong or not. Okay, so we get to this. Boot manager. Uh-oh. So what do we hit? It's, this should go to a grub bootloader not the hmm i mean let's just hit enter on the windows one doesn't do anything we'll, we'll pull out the we'll pull out this uh usb and then power it on we'll see if that makes a difference but this is obviously the hard drive there's only one in here the one that's highlighted white there so i'm going to hit enter and oh it does nothing 
So I've got some kind of bug. <laughs> okay, so upon further investigation of this computer, uh, looks like. See if back. Can I go back? See if it lets me go back here. I don't know. I don't know what the heck it's doing. I just hit arrows. Okay. Well, under advanced options, there was a safe video mode. So I'm thinking safe video mode might actually work on our whole NVIDIA problem with the other laptop. And I think I'm going to test that out next. But for now, I'm still playing around with this ThinkPad. Maybe. Custom install. No, let's just use the entire disk. And maybe it's because I hit MBR. I'm just going to leave this all default. I'm not going to touch anything. Not. I guess I'll enter a username and stuff. Ah. Uh, Okay, we're back to the screen after installation completing. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit finish here. Sorry for the shaky camera. Holding it with my hand, and it's going to reboot. So last time it didn't boot. Let's see what happens. This time we didn't check MBR. That's the only difference we made. The only thing we changed. Wow, you can really see the dust from this camera. And it looks like it boots fine. So the MBR thing wasn't working. Maybe it's because I wiped. Windows, I don't know, but it appears we are booting into MX Linux as of right now. That's new. I don't think so, but look, looks like it's just prompting for my password there. All right, what do we got? There's the desktop. Looks very clean, very nice. Little startup thing. Hard to see on this camera. So I went through every hotkey on this keyboard, every hotkey as in the function keys, trying to figure out which one was the BIOS, and I eventually did figure out it was, wait, what, what was it? Hold on, I forget. Might have been, it was F1, I think? I think it's F1. F1, pressing F1, makes a loud beep, goes to the BIOS. Okay, so I'm just going to flip through these. This is the, yeah, I'm just going to flip through them. I don't think I need to really talk. Now I think it's time, guys. We try the Zen book with safe mode. Will it boot past the annoying Quadro NVIDIA driver problem that nobody has fixed on Linux installers? Find out more on this episode. Okay, so we're back to the old uh, Zen book, and we're gonna shut down its windows that's running right now. And when we boot, what key is it? What key is it gonna be? On the Lenovo, we were looking for F1 and F12, pretty much. F1 was BIOS, F12 was boot menu, I think. Uh, yeah, F10 was test, diagnostic. So what is it on this HP Zen, Zen Did I say Zen book? This is a Z book. This is an HP Z book. I, do, I did just get a Zen book. That's the one with the USB-C stuff that I was talking about earlier, but I'm not going to mess with installing that on there. But I could later. I might later. And if I do, if this gets, you know, if people like this kind of stuff, I'll keep making it because I enjoy making this kind of content personally. Okay, so we're going to power this up. We're going to try escape. I recall it being escape. I don't remember exactly, but escape's usually a good first try on most brands. Spamming that escape. Am I spamming it too much? No, you can't spam it too much. It's got to do something. There's literally nothing on the screen. It's just a blank screen. I'll do this all day. I got rhythm. I got rhythm, computer. I can spam your escape key all day. Maybe I should just let up. I'm going to let up. There it is. It was literally waiting on me to stop spamming it. Okay, so this is the startup menu. Escape got me the startup menu. 
And there is a bio setup, so it looks like you can get to everything from Escape here on this uh, HPC book. So we're going to go to Boot Device Options. No, actually, let's go to the BIOS setup, and let's just make sure that Safe Boot is off. Boot Options, and we're going to hit Escape again. Oh, it does say down in the corner on this one to hit Escape for Startup Menu. That's very handy. Okay, so we're going to go to Boot Device Options, and we're going to boot to the external USB drive. Sorry you can't see this well, but uh, it says external USB drive. We're going to hit Enter. Of course, this is the drive. Look at it go. Yeah. That's as good as it gets, guys. Okay, so there's safe video, which makes me think it's going to bypass this Quadro NVIDIA card problem we're getting on every Linux version we try to install. So let's press it. Safe video. How safe is it? Not very safe. That's uh, the same thing we're getting before. Anyone out there know how to get Linux on the HP ZBook with a Quadro graphics card? I'll post the or I'll put it in post the exact model and spec. But I've got nothing. I've searched high and low at one point and I just gave up. And here I am again, once again, giving up on putting Linux on the HP ZBook. I would love to have it. It's a perfect computer for it. Thing comes with 32 gigs of RAM and a high-end uh, i7. It's kind of an older computer at this point, but it is such a beast. It's great for development, and I just really want to use Linux on it. I just really want to use Linux on it, man. All right, well, that's going to do it for this video. Please leave a, a like. Please leave a like. Oh, man, I've probably been messing up the audio. Sorry about all the quality and production issues. I'm just doing this at my desk kind of on a whim, so hopefully it's entertaining enough to, to garner some views and is actually useful enough. So... Peace out, guys. Stay safe out there. Don't do anything I wouldn't do, which is buy a MacBook. I'm kidding. I don't have anything against MacBooks. I just, I just wanted to slip that in there.